Welcome back to ILTV. I am interviewing Janice in France today, who is an inspirational woman. She moved from the US to France in her 70s and started a YouTube channel. There was a comment left under one of my earlier episodes of ILTV from a woman who was wondering, where is it safe to travel in Europe as a single woman? And so I knew I had to interview Janice so she could tell her story. She is on a mission to inspire others and to let them know it's never too late to fulfill their dreams. She had a dream of moving to France and in February 2022, that dream became a reality. When she moved to France, she started up a YouTube channel, Janice in France, which I'll link below. And it's a must watch for anyone who is interested in what expat life looks like, if you're interested in moving overseas or you're interested in traveling to France. And um, what I love most about Janice and her YouTube channel is just how open and honest she is. There's lots of really quirky, interesting videos to set on expat life, but she also has an open conversation about how expat life isn't always plain sailing, but that she absolutely loves her life in France and she wouldn't change a thing. On this episode, we talk about why France, how long it took her to move to France after making that decision, how she brought her dog and her cat with her, how she really misses her daughter, but how she doesn't miss the US. And it's not because she's not a proud American, it's just that she loves her life in France. She also talks about what she learned most about herself after moving to France, what expat life is like there, how she's integrated into the community and her social life. So I hope you enjoy the episode. Um, if you like what you see here and you want to learn more about your opportunities overseas, you can sign up for the Daily Postcards, which is a free e-letter by International Living. I'll link it below. And do hit the subscribe button so you won't miss out on any future episodes. And I hope you enjoy the episode with Janice. Janice, welcome to ILTV. How are you this morning? I'm fine and thank you for having me. Oh, I'm delighted to have you on. I've been looking at your blog and looking at your Instagram and I'm like, I need to talk to that woman. <laughs> what an inspiration. Um, so I guess we're going to jump into it for the viewers. Would you give everyone a bit of a background where you lived before you live in France? And um, I guess, yeah, how you ended up living in France. Well, I've always wanted to live in France since the 80s. That's always been a dream of mine. And I lived in Georgia, uh, North Georgia, and I had taught school there for 13 years. And then I had taught school previously in California for 10 years. So I had retired in 2017. So I was doing just little bits of things. And then I came home one day from work and I said, what would you do if you went to a doctor's office today? And he said, you only have one more year to live. No pain, no nothing, but it will be gone in one year. What would you do? And I said, uh, I'm going to move to France. <laughs> when you were making this decision, were you nearing retirement age or were you a few years? I had already off? been retired for about two years. For about two years. Because I had done two years as a chaplain. Right. All, so it was almost four years, two years as a chaplain and two years working at this little um, cafe retail place. And, and I just said, no, this, this just can't be all it is. I this cannot else. be it for the rest of my life. Right. And so France was always calling you. You had like an, a, an affinity for France. And where did that come from? I lived in West Africa, Douala, Cameroon in the 80s. And it's after very three interesting. years, I knew that I would come back to France one day. I didn't know when. I really figured that my husband and I would retire here, but my husband unfortunately passed away in 2012. Oh, sorry, so uh, that plan didn't work out. As we know, you know, plans just always sometimes just don't work out. But um, anyway, we had talked about retiring, but you know, when you're raising a child on your own, you don't even think about that anymore. You just think right. about putting food on the table and, making sure she's taken care of. So um, I just taught and I had two jobs and that's, that's what I did until I retired. Yeah, God, and, and I'm, I'm sure, you know, it's, it was hard obviously when you, 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 to leave your daughter, I guess, was a big deciding factor, but I'm sure she's delighted for you kind of living this. Well, she's 23. Life. Right. So she is, and I hate to say this, but she probably won't watch it anyway, but <laughs> she's rather immature for her age and we have no family. It's just she and I. Just the two of and you. And so it's not like we have cousins and aunts and uncles. So 
even when I discussed it with her, she said, I don't want to talk about it. We'll talk about it later, you know. And, of course, she helped me move over here. I only had three suitcases, and she helped, thank goodness, because at that time I had two, a uh, dog and a cat. Wow. But, um, I think she's okay with it. She seems to be. We don't get to see each other that much. But I think it's good for her because she gets to stand on her own. Although mm-hmm. there's sometimes when she tells me things that happen at work, I just want to go, I'm calling those people. <laughs> I'm going to get them. I'm calling them right now. And yeah. I'm, tell them, I'm reporting them to the labor board. If they do that to you, one more time, you know. Mom is stepping so, in. <laughs> that's, so it's kind of nice that mom is here and she's there because it gives her a chance to stand on her own two feet, which she does very well yeah. and takes care of herself. Yeah. And we're so connected now. You know, my sister lives in Australia and we're very close and, it's great. We're so connected with like Zoom or video calls that, you know, you can, you can still have like a very strong relationship with someone. Right. She calls me every day. And then sometimes she'll say, mom, turn on the video. And I'll say, Jen, I just woke up. It's okay, mom. I just want to see you. And I said, Jen, really? (laughs) (laughs) You know, I'm not 23. I don't look like that at 20, at my age. (laughs) Let me go put my lipstick on, you know. I love it. And so tell me, when you decided you wanted to move to France, what were some of the steps you had to take? Or how long did it take from making that decision to actually going? I made the decision in May and I left January 30th. Right. So it was less than a year. Eight months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was renting, so I didn't have to sell my home. I had already sold our home and I was renting. So all I had to do was give notice that I was leaving And what I did was um, I had to figure out where to live. Mm -hmm. Well, going back to 2018, I took a six-week solo trip. I went to Austria. I went to London. I went all over. And I really focused on various places in France because I knew that's where I wanted to live. Mm -hmm. But there was a little thought in the back of my mind, I I might want to move to Italy. But then it just left. So I went different areas, West Coast, East Coast, South, France. And then because I had seen this film on Netflix called Rain. I've never seen this. R-E-I-G-N. It talks about the Chateau and Fontainebleau. And I thought, I might as well just go see it because I was staying in Paris. And I thought, I'll just go to Fontainebleau for a couple of days. And I took the bus and I got here and I said, this is where I want to live. And through Facebook, I found a friend who knew a friend that had an apartment. So I came through this apartment and viewed it. The people here were getting ready to move out. And then things didn't work out. I didn't get to move in 2018. So when I decided, I just spent hours and hours and hours on the internet trying to find a place to live. And finally, I sent a note to my landlord and I said, hey, do you know anyone around the area? Because we have a university, NSED is here, a university for uh, young men and women that are getting their master's. Right. So everyone has something to rent. And she said, well, my apartment that you saw is coming up in February. So that determined... When I was leaving. Right. Yes. So then I had a date of when I was going to leave and then I had to start the paperwork. So everything kind of went to that date. So I moved in here February 1st, a year ago. Wow. So you're there a year. Oh, wow. And like that, yeah, I'd say it was a, it was a fast year. I'd say you look so settled looking at you on your, on your social channels. You look like you've been living there for years. Very well, integrated. You know, everything, the good thing about it is I'm always surprised. Like yesterday, I was watching some students and they were leaving school and they were all in a line and then they all were going down on this other side of the street and they cut through. But then when I came close to my apartment, they were cutting through my, by my apartment and I thought, There's, I can go that way. I don't have to go this way. So I learned something new just about every week, something something new. It's a very small town, but I like it. So it's a university town, am I right? In Sid. Mm -hmm. Right, very good. And so what does your life look like there now? What is what? What's what's your life like there now? What's your typical day like? My life is just like anyone else's life. I mean, I have to clean the kitchen. I have to take care of the litter boxes. I mean, you know, 
But this is different. If I want to get on a bus and go to the train station and then go into Paris, it'll take me 45 minutes. I can go into Paris and have lunch. I can go in Paris and have a Starbucks, which I haven't had in a whole month. <laughs> and so it is my choice, you know. Yeah. But And then I can go around town and I can interview and show people where I live. But the main reason that I started this YouTube was to encourage women, men, don't give up. Just because we reach a certain age, let's don't give up on life. Let's right. don't settle, you know. Right. And, and so you yeah, have a YouTube yeah. channel just to, I'll, I will link it below. I'll be able to link so Thank people you. can go follow your that. journey. And um, And so, yeah, one of my questions was, what was the motivation to start that YouTube channel and the blog? So that sounds like that's what it was to inspire. That was it. I want to encourage other people. Don't give up. If you had a year to live, what would you do? You know, yeah. would you say, hmm, I might just stay here and go to bed and sleep for the rest of the year, you know, watch movies. I mean, that's okay, but be a little adventurous. It's like, I always tell people when you come to France, And you go to a restaurant. Don't ask for an English menu. Right. Just I love that. Try to go with the flow. See if you can figure it out. See if you can figure out some words. And hopefully you were a little bit better about French than I was when I first moved here. Uh -huh. Although I had lived in Cameroon for three years. And it is a English and French right. uh, country. So mm -hmm. I knew a little bit. I knew that, you know, Chinese food was chinois. And I knew a little bit to read the menu. But. Have a little adventure. You know, yeah. I didn't ask everyone to move to France, but, you know, maybe it's time you started that rumba class or maybe it's something that you've always had a passion. Maybe you want to start art, doing art. I mean, yeah. you know, just don't settle. Yeah. Yeah. And don't wait. Why? Why not now? You know? Yeah. And, yeah. you know, most of us at my age, we have our children are grown. And I know people have told me, Janice, once you have grandchildren, you know, you won't, you'll want to go back. And I thought, well, by the time I have grandchildren, there's no way I'll probably have to fly them over. But no, I, no, I won't. Yeah, you love your life there. That's great to hear. And I must ask, so your your husband sadly passed in 2012. I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, but you. I, I And you were saying that it's a, it was a, um, a plan for the two of you to retire in France. So I'm sure it's really special being there. But were you nervous moving as a single woman to France? No. No, no. Nope. I went on a trip by myself for six weeks to five different countries that I, and some of them I had never been to before. No, I mean, there's nothing here, honestly, to be afraid of. Yeah. Not yeah. any more than living in Atlanta, Georgia. Right. I would rather live here than in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, you we know. hear that actually from a lot of our, um, our, our correspondents and expats with international living that, um, you know, the, that they, they would feel, you know, safe, you know, even in, in, in comparison to maybe where they came from in the US. And um, yeah, no, I just, I think it's quite inspirational, your story. I think it's amazing. I think what you've done Thank is great. You. So congratulations. And I'm I so, hope that it inspires other people. I'm sure it, I'm sure it already has. And so t tell me about your blog. So you set, you set up your blog and you set up your YouTube channel. I'm sure people are thinking like, You know, there's a lot of work. So how do you manage that? Or how, do you do it yourself? Or how, how do you work? No, out? I have. No, I have an editor. Very she good. She lives in the Philippines. Okay. So we, now she wasn't my first editor. My first editor was a young lady. <clears throat> excuse me. My first editor was a young lady that I had known since the four, since when she was in the fourth grade. Right. So she kind of had the ability because she had had a blog before. So she kind of helped me into it. And then when I moved over here, she did. And then she said, Janice, I can't help you anymore. I, you know, I need to make money and I need to charge more and I can't afford it. So I found this wonderful young lady through a friend of mine that had visited me here that had found me on YouTube, called me up and said, hey, let's have dinner. And I said, okay. And I found Mary Grace and she is my editor now and she does all of my Instagram and she does it all. I just do the videoing myself, you know. Oh, good. But I'm sure that's uh, she really interesting for people that would like to set up something similar and they're thinking, I don't have the skills or I don't know how to do that. Or, you know, you just think Mary Grace. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mary Grace is the one, you know, it's, it's the, um, 
it's the filming that I think that a lot of people might not want to do because I'm just one of those people. I'll just put the, um, uh, you know, the, um, well, I just went blank. Hang on a second. I'll put the, um, the oh my God, I'm looking right at it. Uh -huh. The, 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 uh, yes. Oh my God. <laughs> oh Lord. Let's go back on that one then. Um, I'll take the tripod to France with me and to Paris and yeah. I'll put it up and I'll just talk and everything. Of course, I know people are watching, but I don't pay any attention to it. A lot of people can't do that. But right. It doesn't bother me. And then even though I do that, I call myself an introvert because I like staying at home. Yeah. I mean, I have a friend of mine the other day. She's a Janice. You are not an introvert. You're not. You can and be I both. said, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think yeah. I could be. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're, I mean, it doesn't nothing. I think we all realize the power of just our own space, even during COVID. And if you have a space that you love and you're, you're, you've made it your own, people quite enjoy being in their own space. Right. I love being at home too. I right. Love, I love going out, but I love coming home. <laughs> well, I have to, uh, I have to come home to uh, get those batteries going again because yeah. once I go out and I'm among people for a certain amount of time, and I think there are many of us like that. We just get drained. Yeah, and then it's 100%. Like, yeah. I need to go home and chill out for a while and, you know, yeah, get it back Yeah, the batteries. And so what's the social scene like in your town or would you, is there many expats there? Okay, I have to confess. There is an English-speaking church here. Okay. There is a group called um, Crossroads. And they have book studies and they have people on Mondays, they do a walk and they have a book study during the week and they're going to have a photography class. And I have a friend that I met through YouTube. She lives in Belgium and she came and watched my landlord's uh, dogs while they went to India. Within three weeks, she knew more people than I had in a year because she put herself out there, Right. you know. And so I think I joined Crossroads and then there's another women's group in Paris that every once in a while I have a friend there that they'll, she'll say, we're going to do this, this, and this, you know, would you want to join? Okay, I'll, I'll come to that, you know, and I'll pay my little $15. But I have a commitment issue. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Um, I love going to church and it's a nice place and it's so friendly and, but Sometimes it's just like, I want to be home. It's you right. Know? It's and, the repetitiveness going, of every week. I worked so many years. And I remember one day Jen was getting on the bus and I was getting ready to go to work early. And um, I saw all the moms, not all the moms, but a lot of moms out there with their coffee cups and they're talking and everything. And I thought, right. man, I wish I could be that. And then I thought, then what am I going to do after 10 o'clock? <laughs> you know, um, no, I don't want to go down to Debbie's house and do crocheting with her. And I'm just, not, that's just not my personality. Not who you are. Nope. I like to be going. I like to be talking. If I could give, if I could give talks all over the world, I would be there in a New York minute. Yeah. I love that. And I love having, uh, listening to people. Also, mm -hmm. I have a master's in family counseling and I love listening to people. So on Saturday evenings, I have a free group called Wellbeing. Mm -hmm. And we talk about anxiety. We talk about depression. We talk about how to be happy, how to stay happy. You know, so you set that like up that. in your time? No, I do it all on online. On mm -hmm. Very online. good. Very interesting. I haven't done anything in town yet. Except go to church. Yeah. And I've only gone once. I haven't gone since. And I know that's terrible, but sometimes I just want that time to be mine. And you think yeah. after living seven days by yourself, did you not get enough time? Well, no. Yesterday I was doing a video and I had to go around and, you know, it was exhausting and it was raining and, you know, and then I've got the dogs that I take out all the time and I go grocery shopping. And grocery shopping here is so different than it is. You know, in the States, I don't just drive my car down and push a buggy, get my groceries, put it in my car, take it in the car. You know, I've got to get on a bus. I've got right. to wait for the bus. I go get my walk to this grocery store. 
then I'll walk to the bus station, and then I've got to wait on the bus again, and I'm in a small town, so buses yeah. don't come around every 10 minutes. So it's just different, even though I'm a I'm by myself. Your days are full. I just like, yeah, I mm-hmm. want that time just alone, that I don't have any responsibility. And you're not answering to anyone but yourself. You know, you're creating your hours, your days, what you fill it with. And um, yeah, I think that's great. And I have so many people that contact me from my YouTube. I had a lady two weeks ago from Texas. She said, Janice, can we go out for lunch? Well, yeah, let's go for lunch, you know. So and she's visiting was here friends? Jacqueline, we joined, we all three went to lunch together. Brilliant. And, and then I had a lady, oh, just last week, I had a woman that came to Fontainebleau. She had just flown in from Hawaii to Charles de Gaulle because she's going to be exploring France for a whole month. And she said, hey, I'm going to come to Fontainebleau to see you before I go to my other place. I said, heck yeah, let's have some hot chocolate, you know. Excellent. And I love that. Yeah. So I get to do that a lot and a lot during the summer. Well, know, I guess you're, 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 you're like-minded people. They're finding you because they see something in you that they like. And so when you meet, you already have a connection because right. you obviously have a similar outlook, which is... right. Which is making And I have people that I I say, you know what, why don't you come and and let me be your uh, concierge, you know, for a few days and I'll pick you up at the airport and I'll take you around and we'll just go see some stuff. Because what I would really like to do, I would really like for women that just have this Mm self-doubt about traveling by themselves to come travel with me in Paris yeah. And by the time we get through, they're going to go, this is a piece of cake. I'm going to come it. back next time by myself. You I know. saw that on your website. So you do uh, like vacations, I guess. So Parisian vacations, right? For, yeah. for, no, no they're, it's, it's just right here in Paris. I picked them up at the airport, make sure they get back. Yes. We have okay. like a little itinerary, that kind of thing. Very good. And yeah. not a tour guide. Absolutely not a tour guide because okay. here in Paris, or France, I don't know, but man, I know in Paris, you have to go to school, you okay. have to know French fluently, so let's make it very clear, I am not a tour That's guide, nor do I even accept to be a tour guide, you know. Yeah, I actually, lo- I just read how you how you explained it on your website, which I thought was great, and you said, the idea is to meet like-minded women, create fabulous memories, and possibly find the confidence you've always known you've had. That's you know, and it's like, Right now, I know that everyone in the world is listening to all of our stories in France, especially Paris, with the garbage. Mm-hmm. And and I have a friend of mine that I've met through Facebook. She said the other day, I'm going to be there on the 25th. She said, I am so worried about the garbage. And I said, I tell you what, look up at the architect here. Mm-hmm. Oh, Go yeah. to the museums, you know. Take photos of the garbage and you'll have wonderful stories to talk about when you get back home. But think of the positive. Don't worry about the, she said, I'm worried about the rodents. And I said, go home at 10 o'clock. You won't see the rodents. They're just only coming out at night. But you know, Paris is like any other big city. They have rodents, you know. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But, and the the trash is going to be an issue. But, um, but don't look at it like that. Don't say, well, I don't want to go because they have trash. In the streets. Okay. Look they at also them. have so much to offer. So much. Take a yeah. take a boat ride down the same river. Yeah. You won't see any trash. You it's know. Not what you're gonna be or you're going to see are beautiful buildings and listen about beautiful items that are there for your looking and you know going to a restaurant. It you got to put a positive spin on it. Yeah. And I, I'm lo- looking at your little dog there. So you mentioned when you when you were moving, you Sorry. did have a dog and a cat. No, no, no. I lo- I love dogs. So you did have a dog and a cat. Did you bring those with you to France? Yes. my That's one reason why my daughter came with me, uh, because when we came on an international flight, you're only allowed to bring one animal at a time. Okay. So she took one and I took the other. Now, this was my Christmas present to me. <laughs> so cute. So Look he is a much. Parisian dog. So, so now cute. I have two dogs and one cat. So, uh, you know, just make it a little bit more... Uh, interesting in my world here <laughs> and so was it hard to to bring your pets over was there a lot of paperwork and no I did uh I went to my uh veterinarian and he happened to be one that had done the paperwork before so he knew exactly what he was doing so uh 
they had to have their rabies shots no more than 21 days before I got on the plane. Right. And then everything is like down to the last minute because the paperwork has to go to the agricultural okay. department of the government and they have to sign off on it. So, I mean, thank goodness for email, you know, so I didn't yeah. have to worry about waiting for the paper to get through the mail, that kind of thing, you know. Very good. So, yeah. Because that's a lot of questions we would guess. But it's stressful. When I, sure. when I say yeah. it wasn't stressful, uh, you know, I don't mean I don't mean it just went all that smooth. I stressed out about it big time because yeah. if, if the animal can't go, then I can't go. You know? Right. They're your babies. Yeah, because we do get a lot that's of it. questions about um, people that are interested in moving overseas, but they want they have pets and they're worried and what will they do with their pets. So it's great to see that you did that and they're there with you. Right. We had a cat and a dog and I didn't drug either one of them, you know. Because. In fact, Buster, that he's going to be 13 years old next month, and Buster had was in his bag, and I unzipped the bag, you know, during the time the flight attendants are sitting down and everyone's yeah. sleeping. I unzipped the top of the bag, and then I looked down, I couldn't find him. I thought, oh my gosh. So I tapped Jen, I said, Jen, Buster's gone, Buster's oh gone. Oh my gosh. And she looked down, she said, Mommy's on my coat down on the floor. Aww. The best so I just way. left him there till it was time for us to, you know, land. land. So uh, it went really well. But right. when I got here, I can't say that I didn't go into a little bit of a depression. And people that have watched my YouTube know that that I did hit a depression that first couple of days. And was it just the, the overwhelming sense of I'm here now? It was overwhelming. Just... And what in the world have I done? Right. And I sat on my sofa the first night, and I wouldn't even go into my bedroom. I slept on my sofa. Right. I, and and the next day, Jen helped me get everything organized. We went to the store. We, you know, everything, unpacked the suitcases. And, and she said, Mom, what's wrong with you? And I said, I don't know. And then all of a sudden, I just started crying. And I said, I miss my yellow tennis shoes. And she said, what? <laughs> I miss my yellow tennis shoes. And what it was is nothing was mine. Yeah. You were starting. You know, again. so about that third day, we went to Ikea and we got a little of this, a little of that. Right. All, all of a sudden, it started to become mine. <clears throat> and the most interesting part about that story is I had a friend. I moved in in February. She came to see me in May. And she brought something with her from Jen, and I opened up the bag, and it was my yellow tennis shoes. Oh, I love it. So they're there you with know, me now. I just cried, and I said, that's my yellow tennis shoes. Oh. But it was, it had, it's, it was yellow tennis shoes, right? It was just like home. Comfy. It was something so simple, but it was just, yeah, it was, yeah. It was an item that reminds you of home. Yeah, I think. So, I'm, and it's I'm very hard here. for people uh, you know, to, if people are like really tight knit in their community and they're one of these people that they volunteer at the church all the time and they have tons of family and they're always gathering for holidays and stuff like that. I just absolutely wouldn't suggest you moving to another country because yeah. you are going to miss that. Mm -hmm. I didn't have that. Yeah. So I didn't miss it when I moved here. Right. So right. now I have the opportunity to have a community or not to have a community, you know, yeah. but I'm really working hard on French. I do at least two and a half hours a day on French. Wow. So I should have done it last year, but I didn't. Oh, well, you're doing I'm, it now. And there's no better place to do it than as you go. That's right. You know, you know you're and there. And I have a beautiful little store that I go in and they have, um, organic items and I go in so yesterday I went in and they were talking and she said something about her father and I said oh I know what that word is I know what that word is and she said yes yeah. so then they started quizzing me on different words and 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 I thought how nice is that so nice yeah but they're probably so appreciative that you're trying you know because that's that sure means them. but they want to practice English and so yesterday I said no 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 only French only French <laughs> Next time English, we'll take it in turn. Yes, yeah, next time we'll do day after day, right? And so, what's the, what's the the things you learn most about yourself moving moving over to France? That I can budget. 
which I never had been very good at when I was in the States. Um, that I am okay alone. And also, I think most of it is that I can be myself. Right. I don't have to live up to anyone's expectations here. I don't have to dress a certain way. Um, not that it's out of the norm, but it's more freedom here for me. Yeah. You know, so that's what I like. Yeah, I and know. I like the health care. I mean, I can walk down the street to my doctor's office and I pay 35 euros for her to renew my prescription. And um, I've learned that I can do it. Yeah. So health care seems like was a benefit to moving to France. Is there any other benefits you felt? So I know you're saying the fact that you can just jump on a bus and go to Paris. You have that freedom to explore maybe a bit more. Have you been to any other um, European countries? Well, you- yes, I've been to London. I've taken the Eurostar to London. Very now, good. this is what I'm planning now. I have a trip in London planned, not with my daughter, thank goodness, because we always end up doing what she wants to do. So <laughs> I'm going with another friend, and we're going to stay at different um, Airbnbs. She's kind of going to do her thing. I'm going to do my thing, and then we'll meet up and do some things Perfect. similar. And I'm working on, in November... The end of November, I want to go to Vienna because on my bucket list, I want to be in a horse-drawn carriage in the snow. Beautiful. I've always wanted that. I mean, blame it on Hallmark, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I want to do that, and that's what I'm working on now. So uh, I'm going to do that at the end of November, 1st of December. I'll only be in Vienna probably two and a half days in Salzburg, two days And I want to go to their Christmas market, you know. Right, yeah. So uh, that's what I'm planning. And I'm taking Max, the little one, with me. I'm going to dress him up in sweaters and we're going to ride the train and just have a ball doing it. Yeah, and it's. I think that's like, I'm from Ireland. So, I mean, I grew up a European, but I think that's um, something when I speak to other American expats that have moved to Europe, I think it's just that freedom to travel between European countries has been, you know, a great experience to be able well, to do that. Know, I can be in Austria in about eight hours on the train. Yeah. You know, or an hour and a half or hour and 50 minutes by plane. Mm-hmm. And my ticket round trip, $125. Yeah. You can't get from Atlanta to Rhode Island for less than 350. It's crazy. You know, yeah. so it's just ridiculous. And I love tra- traveling the train. I did when I lived in, Uh, Africa, we would come over to Europe and travel, and right. we always traveled by train. And I love the train, yeah. so um, I, I wouldn't want to go very on a 12 hour train. Huh? It's like, there's something very relaxing about the train. It you is know, you can read relaxing. a book, you can look at the window, look at the scenery. Yeah, I like the train too, definitely. Yeah. And so, what is so I know you said, and I think something really important that you said you did do was take an exploratory trip or at least a, a long vacation on your own. to check out some of these places in the back of my thinking. And I think that's something we would recommend definitely people doing if they were ever thinking of moving abroad. But what other th- other tips do you have for someone that, you know, wants to have something more, wants to maybe go overseas, but doesn't really know how to do it or doesn't really know if it's if, if, if they can achieve it? What would you tell those well, people? Well, number one, I think exploring. And not everybody has the capability of going six weeks. But if you do have at least two weeks, try to choose some places because Fontainebleau spoke to me. I got off that bus and saw the carousel and the, the old fashioned lanterns. And I said, oh, my gosh, this is where I want to live because I want to write. So this is where I want to live. This is inspiration for me. But I also think that um, people that have property like at home, they need to check out the taxes You know, because that's a big thing when you retire, you know, and you have inheritance taxes and things like that. I think that's very important. If you are disabled, you need to make sure that you have a place that has an elevator. I had a meniscus tear and I knew with my knee, it's not that I can't walk, but I knew taking my dog down four or five times a day and Buster being older, 
I needed an elevator and not every place has an elevator. So you need to really make sure that you know what you're getting into and that you can afford it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always good because most people that move here, they're a couple. Right. They have two, I would assume. Securities or, yeah. Two social security checks. They have two retirement checks. They probably have uh, some savings they've built up over the time. They probably sold their home or maybe they're renting their home out. I don't know what, but that's the main thing is make sure that financially that you're able, but and also, I think if you stay in a place and you just feel like, oh, this place is too small, then you know you need a larger town. Mm -hmm. Or go to a larger town and go, oh, my gosh, this is like living in New York. I don't want to live here because 10 years ago, I would have been living in Paris. Yeah. But now, because I just moved, when I moved here, I moved from a 500-acre horse farm I was living on. So I liked living in a smaller place, even mm -hmm. though I don't want to live in the country. And also, when you get my age, you need to be near a hospital. You need mm -hmm. to be near doctors, um, you know, and that's just the way it is. That's just life growing older, you know. Yeah. So you, you, you need a checklist, I guess, of things that are important to you and that you need, I guess, to have a an enjoyable life. There's obviously just a couple of factors, like the hospital thing, I think, is an important one. Um, I, I, I even find, there, like in, in Ireland, there's... There's a couple of, you know, larger hospitals. And then there's, you might live in a small town and you might be an hour and a half away from a hospital. And I think that would just freak me out even a little bit, you know. I well, and, and, and also I have two dogs. So I can be at my doctor's office in eight minutes. I can be at mm -hmm. the veterinarian's office in about 10 or 12 minutes. And I can be at the grocery store in about 15. Now, if I want to go to the big grocery store, I can be there in about 20. So, right. and then if I want to go to Paris, I just take the bus to the train station in 45 minutes. I'm at Garde Lyon and I'm at that train station. So, uh, I'm centrally located, but affordably located because Paris is right. no way I could afford it, you know. Yeah, it's the best of both worlds. I think so. I so, think what's next, Janice? Are you going to, is France your new forever home? Was there yes, a it is. Yes. yes, it is. In fact, my landlord asked me the other day, she said, Janice, how long do you plan on staying? And I said, until the nursing home comes uh -huh. and takes me away. <laughs> you know, I don't plan on returning to the States. I love France. I don't want to go to south of France. I've already been there. I like the cooler weather. Yeah. Listen, last year when it was 109 here and no air conditioner, I never in a million years thought I would be able to handle that. And I did it. You know. Yeah. And I didn't have an air conditioner, and I, and I didn't even have the money to go out and buy an air conditioner because, number one, I don't want it just sitting out in the middle of my floor, you know. Right. And, yeah. uh, you know, just for me to be cool. So I had on my table, I had a fan, and down below, I had a fan. And during the 109-degree weather, the dog and the cat and I, we didn't move too much. <laughs> no. I we just got airy stayed, stayed Hydrated. Home. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's so great. You you get a, an opportunity to learn how strong of a person you are. And then there are those days that I just boo-hoo. I'm not going to say I don't. There are days yeah. that I call my daughter and I say, I really miss you today. I never weep because I miss living in the States. I got you. It's okay. The There's not the anything in the States that I... Because I'm older. I mean, I'm not 30, 25, 20. I lived in the States for a long time, you know. Yeah. And every town has a, a Burger King and, you know, a Chick-fil-A. and I mean, you could go through one town to another and they're both the same. You, you wouldn't really know which one is different. Yeah. And that's what I like about living here and just having the opportunity to live somewhere different. But... Uh, I don't miss anything about the States and it has nothing to do that the States are better than France or anything like that because I'm yeah. always getting people's and I'm proud to be an American. I'm proud mm -hmm. to be an American citizen, but yeah. the only thing I miss there is my kid. <laughs> yeah. And and if she wanted to move here, I would just be so delighted. But number one, she likes London. She right. doesn't particularly care for France. 
So, uh, and she has her life there and she needs yeah. to stay there, you know, but that's really the only thing I miss. But I do have days that I just, you know, I kind of have the weepy eyes. It's not all yeah. wonderful Janice and France days. I have, I have the weird days. I think too. that honesty is really important for people, you know, that like, you know, if, if you are moving overseas, I mean, you, you wouldn't change it and you obviously love your life there, but we're all human and we're all going to have our days, you know, right. I think that, that's normal. And I think that honesty is going right. to be appreciated. The, um, the Janice and France YouTube cannot tell you everything about what goes behind the scenes. You know, yeah. I try very hard. To, right. I try very hard to stay optimistic though. Yeah. And I've just started on a dating site. Did you? Mm hmm Yeah. Wow, mm -hmm. we need to hear about that. <laughs> yeah, maybe in two or three videos down the road, I'll tell about it. But, you know, You'll have to come back and let us know how you get on. I know. It's just, and I've met some really nice people. I think the culture is so different. And I thought, wow, this is just interesting. You know, yeah. I'm not looking to get married or anything, but I would rather do that. Go have coffee with a gentleman friend. Than to Absolutely. go needle pointing. <laughs> well, you're so fabulous and, you know, vivacious that you definitely should. I think yeah. it's great. It's great. Well, yes, great. you'll have to come on and tell us how you get on. I'd be interested to hear about that. Okay. Oh, well, I'll put out a YouTube about it. Don't worry. Brilliant. Okay. Oh, I'll be looking for it. I'll be All looking. Right. I, I want to just end this interview with mm -hmm. just a bit of a fun um, would you rather, just for people to get a sense of who you are. So it's literally, I'm going to ask you three questions and you just say the first thing that comes to your head. Okay. They're very random. I literally just picked them randomly. Okay. Would you rather go on an epic trip with lots of things go wrong or a boring trip where nothing goes wrong? Oh, epic. Epic. Oh, yes. Okay. Would you rather go to the world's best food destination but not be able to try any food or the world's best beach destination, but not be able to swim? Food. Food. Yeah, I'm a foodie too. Like, I'm not a beachy person. I'd like to I like to look. Well, in Ireland, I love going to the beach, but it's freezing that I never go into the water. Um, okay, so would you rather travel with a personal photographer or a personal chef? Oh, a personal photographer, of course. <laughs> I could be the biggest ham ever. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Janice, it was brilliant. I just think what you're, I think it's very inspirational, your story. I think your YouTube is amazing. I love your videos. Um, as I said, I'm going to link Janice's uh, YouTube below and her website. And on the website, you'll find her Instagram page as well. Um, but yeah, this has been great, Janice. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. You and, are so um, kind and you're so easy to talk with. Thank you so very much. Oh, I you know what I feel like I could keep going yeah. and we could right. keep chatting. So maybe we'll check in again. Yeah, we'll good. check in later. <laughs> Definitely. Well, look, thank you so much and have a great day. Thank you, Hannah. You too. Bye. And there you have it. Another episode of ILTV. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Be sure to hit the subscribe button below. Turn on your notifications so you don't miss out on any future videos and join me for next week's episode.